Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Inky Thoughts Podcast. Today, I have a guest I've been trying to, for some while, actually, to get on here, and I've been blown away by her historical knowledge, actually, first of all, and then I sort of got lured in through her Instagram to her other amazing work, which is, no uh, spoiler here, tattooing, and she's quite an incredible tattoo artist as well as an uh, absolutely passionate person when it comes to tattoos and tattoo history, funny enough. And uh, before I amble on too much, some of the stuff we're going to be talking about today, which I have wanted to talk about for some time, is blackout tattoos, for example, and more on a mental, heavy blackwork tattoos and that. Because I feel a lot of people misunderstand it, and I know my guest today would agree quite a bit on that. It gets a bad rep often, and, and I think a lot of people don't really understand what it's about. But let's see if we can get there with, with the help of my amazing guest. And before I say any more... Katie, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Katie Mizuno. Um, like like that lovely intro said, I'm I do ornamental tattoos, abstract work, um, geometric and black work style tattoos. Um, I own and operate a shop with my husband in Berkeley, California. Um, and yeah, I was born in California, but I grew up in Colorado. Um, and I'll set set down roots in Berkeley. Um, yeah, short intro. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. There's no right or wrong there. Short and sweet is what I, I believe the term is. Uh, but but I'm wondering, Katie, what actually got you into tattoos and tattooing, respectively? Uh, we can sure. sort of start um, with tattoos, but perhaps to take it in the chron. Hopefully, a chronological order. I think with how many tattoos you have. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I went to school in New York City. Um, there are amazing tattoo artists there. Um, so I, I started getting tattooed there um, at, I want to say a young age, but I was 19. The legal, the well, legal age well, of getting I mean, tattooed. I mean, from where we're sitting now, <laughs> that is young. And, and I, and, yeah. And if, and if, and do not digress and interrupt your story before it starts. I often think back, even even though I haven't regretted the number two, I think, wow, I was so young, even though I waited till 18. Right? I was so young. I know. I'm like, I was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but even still, I know some tattoo artists who are like, I was getting tattooed at yeah, 16 yeah. or especially even younger. The, especially the old time was, oh, I got this one when mm -hmm. I was 13. And then I got started working next year. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I I like I envy them for being introduced to it so young. Um, but yeah. I was 19 when I got my first. Uh, I had a friend in college who loved getting tattooed as well. And we would always go to each other's appointments um, and just like make a day of it. And it was such a good experience. So I, I started getting tattooed pretty frequently. Um, but it was never even though I, I knew I kind of had a, a knack for drawing. Um, and I was going to film like art school at the time, although it was film school. So I knew I had an artistic side, but I did not consider it, it did not consider like pursuing it as a hobby or a career in any way. Um, actually, until I met my husband, we were dating um, and doing long distance and he was in design school. Um, so we used to FaceTime or at the time it may have been Skype. Um, and Oof. he would, and just have each other on in the background and he would be drawing for school and he was, and I was like, well, I kind of want to draw too. Um, and so he would, you know, feed me prompts to, of like imagery to draw and I would just do them for fun on the weekends. Um, and when I showed them to him, he was like, these are quite good. And I was like, no, they're not. I have very strong imposter syndrome. Um, oh, yeah. and it wasn't, wow. it wasn't until, yeah, I think most artists do, <laughs> yeah. um, unfortunately. Oh, artists, academics, <laughs> scientists, oh. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Um, yeah, but it, it wasn't until, um, I moved back or I moved to California and we were, mm -hmm. um, and we were like in the same place. Um, I was kind of struggling to find a job at that point. I like, I had certain passions, but nothing, nothing that like fueled me to like wake up in the morning and feel really excited. Mm -hmm. um, but I was still drawing a lot. Um, and my husband, Kento, uh, he was like, well, why don't you like become a tattoo artist? And of course, imposter syndrome. I, I was like, no, I could never. For one, <laughs> I'm not good enough at art and art doesn't pay the bills. And what mm -hmm. would my family think? So I had like every reason um, mm -hmm. to try to convince myself not to pursue it. But 
he planted that idea in my head and it just like grew. And at a certain point, I just realized like, if I, if I can draw every day, I would be happy, so happy. Um, so after that, I pursued an apprenticeship and it was kind of like, I put every effort into it. I was like, it's this or nothing. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, I, I pursued it very hard. I in a way kind of old school. Really way, wanted like, it. That's how that's how they went about it. You know? Yeah. Pl pl yeah. Plus, if it all went sure. wrong, you at least had the excuse you could blame Kento for giving you the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll tell him you said that. He'll laugh. No, sure. uh, uh, let, let me let me let me clearly say as I've had a very brief exchange with Kento before we started recording. He seems like a very very amazing, lovely man. <laughs> Oh, he is. Very I, friendly, I can very, operate very the very business friendly and without helpful. him. I, I just cannot help yeah. my Danishness and throw a little snarky comment in. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, he, uh, I mean, he can't hear because I'm on headphones, but oh, yeah, I'll tell yeah, him yeah. you said that. Oh, no, he'll, no, no, no. no. Don't, don't call me out like that. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, it's, it's kind of cool that you, you got into it sort of uh, in a way I feel is quite healthy nowadays. Because I think the the art mm -hmm. side gets played down sometimes by some people. Yeah, and it is yeah, absolutely a so. craft as well and a service side as well. But we most mm -hmm. really passionate tattoo collectors, which is the side I am more on, I would say, we don't go just because you could do it. It's not like going for a plumber and you go, oh yeah, as long as they fix the sink, it's fine. There's something more to it, and that's where the art part comes in. So, so yeah big, definitely you, you, you and there's like me, a collaborative uh, aspect too. exactly like exactly yeah yeah and, and you remind I feel... me of some of the old guys you've heard about sometimes like i think it was uh yeah. ed hardy as well he was an art student he was an art school person first as well like he's one of the legends of tattooing especially in, in america and yet mm -hmm. people forget sometimes that when they want to be angry at people that started out from an art background <laughs> that some of the legends they they look up to started there too not all of them. Oh, totally. Some of them did. Some of them did. Totally. And you can tell when they're just like, like if, if you see them do art outside of tattooing, um, it's it can become so obvious if they oh, have yeah. if they were like classically trained in art. Um, oh, yes. it's so incredible. It is quite fascinating. Actually, I had a talk with Laura Shack from uh, Tatted app about that in an episode I did with her because she she was quoted in Inked about talking about how tattoos and tattoo artists can sort of blur the line of what we nowadays, some elite, more elite people, I would call it, deem as highbrow and what is lowbrow art. So I think it's cool when you yeah. have people like you that that find a passion first in art and then figure out, well, my avenue is this, like people art on people's skin and find, finding my yeah. own style in that. Yeah, now that you mention it, I'm really grateful that it was that avenue because like, I think ugh, tattooing as a career can seem appealing to people because of like the cool factor or like I kind of describe it as like wanting to be a rock star but mm. not willing to learn guitar type of thing <laughs> um like and it's very nice to you that's know, a you great description that's a great discussion to be honest. right <laughs> like I guess it it has this kind of like mystique and coolness to it but at the core of it you you have to have the passion for art you have to have respect mm. for your clients like there's so much more to it than just like you well, know, creating your own schedule, being your own mm. boss and having fun. <laughs> I mean, that's what also so. keeps some artists uh, on the grind still, uh, even when they might not be getting mm -hmm. money on that. It's the passion, not just for, I mean, it's, it's, for some, it's probably just the passion for the industry. But for a lot, I think it's also the passion for that they found their, uh, what's it called? Oh, fuck. my English is failing me right now. <laughs> their outlet <laughs> for, their, for their artistic, yeah. like their, their outlet for their artistic sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A lot of I know a lot of tattoo artists who just like can't can't stop creating. I feel this way too. Like mm -hmm. when I'm on, even when I'm on vacation, it's like you have to pry my iPad away from my hands just because. Well, as I, as you like, mean, I that might drawing. be the American culture as well. I'll, I'll say. Yeah, as you, as it you might you be appear. a little bit of like crazy <laughs> I mean, work it, ethic. It's all. It's definitely <laughs> also your passion as a tattoo artist, but it might also be a bit of the whole. You know, we get a couple of weeks off and you should work. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, that like my my like workaholic mentality and my passion is like a dangerous combo. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to actually like tone it back a little and do mm. more outside of uh, tattooing because I've just been I've been so obsessed mm. with it since I started, which was like eight eight and a half years ago or so. So 
But it's a bit of a digression, but I actually think, and I'm, I'm interested to know if you would agree with this, but I think that taking a step back and actually relaxing for a bit can often be mm -hmm. a growth bed, be a seed bed for creativity sometimes. It mm -hmm. can sort of free up the brain to do stuff like that. Because I know that by myself when I, it's more with writing, but when I've been really stressed, all my projects fall to the wayside. And then suddenly when I actually take some time off and not do anything, suddenly I get inspired and I write more again and that. Yeah, definitely. There, I used to, back when I started and I was taking on like so many projects, I used to just cram drawing into one day. Mm. And I realized that like my work was good and I was getting stuff done, but it's so much better if I can take breaks um, and sort of just refresh my mind. And especially with the art style that I do, like a lot mm. of it is very nature inspired and it does, it just doesn't make sense to create if I'm not going out into nature or looking at patterns or like doing research in that way. So I'm, I'm lucky to live in California where nature is pretty accessible. Um, but that's, that's like um, something, something I, I do, I need to do even more of it though, just to like get out and see stuff and see patterns um, and, you know, gain, gain inspiration that way. Well, I think whatever you engage with, whether it's uh, in your case, nature and that, for others, it might be video games, for others, it's books and that, but it's it's mm -hmm. engaging those passions, I think, that brings the creativity back sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, going definitely. Out and seeing stuff, because being in a vacuum and just with your own same stuff, that never really breeds much of anything, really. <laughs> totally. And I and I often tell um, artists, like my coworkers, if they're, ha if they're kind of feeling like they're in a drawing rut, like mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll get on our phones and look through Instagram and look at other tattoo artists work, which definitely can be a source of inspiration, mm. but it, it can also kind of like harm your process because oh, absolutely. I, I mean, at least for me, a lot of times I'll scroll and I'll be like, damn, some artists are so good and I'm, <laughs> I need to step up my game and I can, I can kind of lose confidence mm. while also gaining some inspiration. So a lot of times I'll, I'll like put my phone down and I won't look at other tattoo artists work and I'll for like long periods of time. Mm. And I'll try to create um, without those influences of like what other people are doing. And well, I, I, think, I really uh, think that's important for creating mm. your own art style. So you're not mm. just um, copying. That was absolutely, that was actually, was, oh my God, I was about to say something really happy. Of, uh, I didn't interrupt anyways, <laughs> but, but yeah, exactly. Uh, I also think it'd be a confidence boost, especially as an artist that might be important that you re remind yourself that you can create without needing to be guided by others in that way. Mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, I, yeah. I, I at least would imagine I'm not creative in, in that artistic way myself, but at least from what I've observed from others, especially from the two artists, the best mm -hmm. ideas you get for yourself and the ones you're proudest of are often the ones you come to when you get inspired personally and not just by constantly looking at what other people are doing or wanting to get into yeah. more of what they're doing. Of course, that's also yeah. helped me sometimes in trying out new things you might not have thought of yourself. But it it, it must be an incredibly confidence building when you get an idea from your own inspiration from something. Mm -hmm. like yeah, it is a huge confidence boost. Mm -hmm. For sure. Before, like, for example, um, during the pandemic, uh, when the shops had were closed for a long period of time, especially in California, we weren't able to operate for um, an extremely long period of time, like almost a year. And and it was I I didn't have anything to do. And so I was like, well, maybe I'll draw for one thing, like um, because I can't help it. Um, and I found that I was like, without a prompt from a, a client or without that collaboration, I, I didn't know really what to make. And I, I started scrolling through Instagram looking for inspo. Um, at the time I was tattooing like other styles. I was doing fine line and um, some realism, but I really wanted to hone in on a specific style. Nice. And because of like, because of the pandemic, one, I had time. Um, and I also, I had time to figure it out. But I also had my husband step in and he he took my phone away and he was like, how about you don't go on Instagram <laughs> for a long period of time? And he actually changed my password. So I could not log in at all. <laughs> and he was like and then he handed me my iPad and he was like, now make some art. And without without being able to see other references, I started creating like really abstract stuff, a lot oh, yeah. of like flowing textures. 
and that's kind of how I landed on my style ultimately now mm. um, was was by taking away distractions and taking away um, Instagram and just like focusing on what I would create um, if I had all the time in the world and uh, like no no other you know uh, sources of like yeah. information or like other art styles to influence me. I will say your your style is. I mean, I think the way I would describe it best myself is when I've looked at your style. I'm looking at it a bit now as well, just to remind myself of, of some of the ideas I've had. But I think about it is that at mm -hmm. first glance, to people that don't know better, it looks like a lot of other ornamental stuff. But when you look at it closer, there's so much more interesting stuff going on, and you seem to almost be inspired not just by ideas by your clients, but also by their unique body structure. In a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, with large tattoos, um, I had there was an artist who kind of when I started doing larger pieces, um, he described it so well. He was like, "You have to be less so like a tattoo artist, more so a tailor or a fashion designer, because mm. um, like all of the designs should cater to the human form and mm. flatter flatter the body." So I always like when when I'm designing for my clients, I always need photos of the yeah. tattoo location on their body so that I can kind of fit it to their anatomy. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really important. And actually, um, our like our tattoo shop is having a flash day um, later Ooh. today. Uh, I know <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, but all of us had to draw tattoo flash and um, I contributed some as well. And with just a piece of paper to make like a, a contained image i was i felt so out of practice and my I can style imagine with meant what to you flow. do normally it would be very difficult yes. to do flash suddenly because because yes, it's incredible what you do so... but it's so far removed from just doing a simple exactly flash. exactly i just had a piece of paper and i was like i wish i had an arm or a leg because <laughs> i was i felt lost i was like i don't know it's like it's hard without for me it's yeah. hard without Unless oh, I have like a I, full I, limb. I would so. love to be a fly on the wall later today if you just suddenly go like, fuck it, can we just get some walk in and just like full leg, full yeah. car? Like, yeah, can we just turn this little like, flash piece you, into you a You do sleeve? your flash and your fun flash day. I'm going to call up a regular or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> No, but I, I, but I get it, but but that shouldn't at least, uh, I mean, I know you know this, but that shouldn't deter or detract from how amazing your art is, though, because you've clearly found a niche you're very good at. And like we we're talking about, and I love that description your the guy gave you there with tailoring, because that's what it looks like mm -hmm. when you look at the ornamental tattoos you do. And you seem to have some of the most incredible ones I can, I've seen is where you mix these, you know, gradient great gradations in these ornamental pieces that really makes it look like you almost put some like sort of jewelry or armor or clothing really on these on these uh, clients yeah i often describe it as armor mm. um especially i guess i guess technically my tattoo style is pretty heavy like i consider it yeah. heavy black work and for a lot of people that can seem scary or intimidating or too much. Um, but I often <laughs> try to design it in like a, a more feminine way or, or mi even mm -hmm. mixing more masculine and feminine elements. Yeah. Um, and my hope is that like, like more women get heavy black work. Oh, um, I, I, especially. I, I would agree. Yeah. Like that, I yeah, because really it can cool it can that. look very delicate and feminine, even though you know it's a lot of ink I, or it's I, a very strong piece. I was about to say, especially in the way you design these pieces, both for men and women, there's an elegance to them. Like it's such a mm -hmm. heavy Thank piece you. when you look at it, and it's so dense. But there's there's an elegance to how you design these pieces, and I I, yeah. I rarely see this in Thank ornamental you. pieces because ornamental pieces can be cool even with their traditional Polynesian or whatever and all that. They can be very cool even in their mo almost haberdashery kind of way sometimes with how they're done. But but it's something incredible and and something I don't think many could ach could achieve without a lot of practice in how you design these pieces and how elegant they are yet really heavy and dense and in your face and yeah like the, I and yeah. I fully and, and to latch onto another thing you said there because it's sadly not in any podcast I have out now but years ago I interviewed uh, a friend of mine from uh, well from Spain but lives in Australia called Alicia Sia Tattoos. At this time around, I did an interview about this, but it's one of her passions. And she would, you would absolutely find a kindred spirit in her. 
She does these amazing, big, in-your-face, gothic pieces sometimes. And she very much is tired of uh, men often and women coming mm -hmm. in and saying, oh, I can't get that. Was my boyfriend might hate it? Or what are people going to think if I'm a, as a girl, have such a massive tattoo? But it's like, fuck that. It's a, it's a weird socially constructed gendering bias that women can't have really heavy or dense tattoos. Yeah, totally. So I'm absolutely I also, on your side there. And I think they look beautiful. Sure. Like I, I keep looking at the... The the neck and shoulder piece you did on the client in one of your latest posts. It's absolutely incredible. And, and oh, yes, it's you. heavy for anybody that doesn't that isn't into it or might not see these. Yeah, it's heavy, but it's elegant as well. Really fucking elegant. It follows the flow of her body so well. And I love to, again the gradation you do with the neck there. It's way more than a simple and that's one of the points I wanted to talk to you about as well again today. People often call ornamental tattoos really simple and sometimes lazy, yeah. especially when we get into black work territory or black out territory. But you clearly right. proved them wrong. And and some of the artists you've worked with in collaborations also clearly proved this wrong. But yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny you say that because I remember when I was doing other tattoo styles, um, I remember seeing like large scale geometric and ornamental work. And I kind of had the same thought. I was like, that's so simple. It's just patterns. Um, and it wasn't <laughs> until it wasn't until I started getting those pieces tattooed and started tattooing it myself where I was like, this is quite difficult, mm. like to put a pattern on on the body where it's, you know, we're not flat surfaces and we're not perfect cylinders. It's very hard to stencil Absolutely. and to to make it look elegant and not chunky and have good composition and good balance. Like it's definitely, you definitely have to like flex a certain mental muscle. Um, and I think that, that helped me see more of the beauty in it. Um, on top of so many of the other great things, like it ages extremely well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, and you know it it flatters the body there i mean i could go on and on about like but, but i think that's not just, of, of the that's not just the art style though that's not just the art style though even though it is incredible and i, and I think when it done well like with yourself and some of the people you've worked with and others uh it's done incredibly well like also people like jack pipiette and people like that they, you do incredible ornamental tattoos and, and but it's not just the art style of itself it's not like how uh, new traditional of course it's a design thing but there's certain expectations within the style that just makes it look cool and if you're into new traditional you'll probably like it but with ornamental there's mm -hmm. so many ways of doing it but also so many ways of doing it wrong mm -hmm. that you gotta have yes. an art i think weirdly enough more so than many other tattoo uh styles you really gotta have an eye for design also when it comes to how it fits on the body yeah yeah definitely and the you mentioned there are so many ways to do it wrong like you can you can really like throw off the entire look of a piece just by like one one simple decision um or or for example you had mentioned blackouts um a lot of my pieces have areas of solid black yeah and that was probably the most difficult tattoo technique for me to learn a lot of times people will say oh solid black it's just coloring in or they're like i could do that with a sharpie and i'll have yeah. to tell them like not many people can tattoo solid black and have it look good there's well, like also, there's a also very... the, the example you gave yeah. there even thinking back to my childhood and youth even coloring in with a sharpie you could often not saturate <laughs> it right it's a That's weird true. comparison people have. Like, I can't think of a single time I've ever, you know, no matter what color it was with a Sharpie, colored <laughs> something in and it was completely, you know, saturated one un full color. Like, Yeah, for sure. And and with, with the tattooing it, there's like, I mean, even with Sharpie on paper, there's like a, there's a very fine window of opportunity where it's perfect. And on the other side, it's like patchy and inconsistent and not saturated. And then on the other side of that, there's completely overworked and you can scar your client. Oh, client. Yeah, and right in the yeah. middle, there's that there's that gold <laughs> gold spot where it is like perfectly saturated. But that's, um, but that's what I think. And like, it's it's like, very hard to hit. I don't even have any blackout tattoos myself. The closest I come is I have a Polynesian piece that was done on me by a Hawaiian lady. She's sadly dead nowadays right. now, but mm -hmm. that's the closest I've come to like heavy black work. And even mm -hmm. in that, it could get patchy and she was older, so she didn't have all the techniques some people might have in that. But it's still a, a piece I'm very happy about. But even there, I learned that the least, even with the healing, you can fuck up 
ornamental tattoos yeah. in how they heal with less heavy black work. Yeah. And I think a lot of people underestimate this so much when they talk about blackout tattoos. And I, I've mm -hmm. often heard it. I know you've often heard it from our talk before the, the podcast interview. So many people are like, oh, that's just a lazy cover up. I think that there's mm -hmm. two main reasons I have. And I, I'll ha be so excited to hear your thoughts on this after mm -hmm. why it's not a lazy cover up. First of all, it takes a lot more work than people think, like you've been talking about already. Mm -hmm. And even without being a tattooer myself, I'm just thinking about looking at when I get tattooed and looking down at what's happening. The amount of blood coming out when you're using that many needles on the skin at one time and with ink must make it so difficult to notice during the process how saturated it is. That is an yes. incredible skill to learn, I imagine. And the other part yes. is the commitment it takes to have such a bold tattoo, whether you make some really cool with negative space or that, or get something like Katie does with amazing ornamental <laughs> stuff mixed in with heavy black work, it's still an incredible commitment because this is not cover operable. We are not all Remy who goes viral for having done this bodysuit over his blackout and all that stuff. And sure, he's absolutely proven the point. It can't be done. Not everyone is going to be able to do it well. So it is yes. a massive commitment. Just like how yes. laser is possible, but can't <laughs> remove any tattoo, it's still permanent. <laughs> yes. It's the same yes. principle and I here. Think, right. And there's there's so much, like a lot of, because I get asked all the time, all the time, like, why did you get a blackout? Um, and, um, or I'll get straight up just mean critiques where they're like, I do mm. not like that. And I do, I kind of like talking mm. about it and educating people a little bit because mm. I think it is a very intense body mod. And I think a lot of times people immediately dislike something that they just don't understand yet. Oh, yes. Um, I can concur as a sociologist. People have an yeah, incredible yeah. fear still today of what they neither do nor care to take time to right. understand. And the last yes, part is important. For sure. <laughs> for sure. And like if, like if anyone is listening to this and is curious about blackouts or why someone decided to get one, I would, you can totally ask that person because a lot of times the people who have blackouts, I've found they're, they're like quite friendly. And yeah. Like not, not it's very like, it's like when people first encounter metalheads sometimes. Like it, yes, exactly. <laughs> that's a, that's a great comparison. And yeah, yeah, like I mean, with blackouts, I understand how it would, how it's not always everyone's aesthetic, mm -hmm. but I've, I've kind of described it to people as like tattoos are like a way that you would, decorate your house like maybe you're into like maximalism and you have you love trinkets or you have lots of plants in your house mm -hmm. or you like you know um um like a different aesthetic like something gothic and dark and you like darker colors with blackouts i kind of envision it as like a modern very minimalist aesthetic mm -hmm. um, and mean. there's like, like a, there's sort of some of that yeah uh, 80s futuristic metallic sort of design look yeah to it in a way. Yeah, yeah that's kind of the vibe that i get it's like it's i always think fifth very... element even though there's no blackout tattoos in yeah. fifth element for some reason i think of fifth element when i see blackout tattoos sometimes yeah i almost think of like cement almost brutalist architecture or something yeah. but like very sleek and modern that's kind of how i picture blackout tattoos um mm. as that way and um even even if the aesthetic is not is not for everyone um i would hope that people would respect the the effort it takes to yeah. tattoo it and learn how to tattoo it and also mm. the experience that um you know the rite of passage that the client goes oh, through because yes. it is oh, yes. it is brutal to sit that's through. a fire birth. it is not I always, easy i always feel almost even though scar tattooing of a scars and old tattoos might hurt more at times i almost feel even more sorry uh, and proud of people that go through it with the first one even though because that is an insane commitment to go through yeah but you don't have many tattoos yet and you just black out an arm or even just part of it like yeah very quickly and that's a fire birth pain wise as well <laughs> oh big time and then healing the healing is intense the swelling is intense mm. also like it's it's hard to tattoo like one part of the effort is just maintaining like you said the blood um you have to like maintain a clean work environment and a lot of times that's a lot of the work too just to like imagine. keep everything contained and safe but that's the thing, like there's there's a lot of effort that goes into it that I feel is ignored. And I, I, even just observing it sometimes, like online and talking to people like yourself and Robbie and others, I know 
it's baffling to me how people that work with it so with interviewing sometimes can be like oh that's just lazy how it takes so much time effort and even skill to get it right because as we also talked about before the part before the episode started i've seen in numerous amounts of blackout tattoos that are done poorly because some pe- person just mm-hmm. went to some artist to think oh it's just coloring in properly like you talk- said and then they end up with patchy blackout tattoos mm-hmm. and i think yeah. it's way more beautiful when you have an really well done blackout too because it's not i'll have a little bit it's not i'm not gonna, never gonna get a blackout to two I, I don't think that's ever gonna be my aesthetic but i really admire how well they're done sometimes like for some of your own arms they're so saturated and well done that they seamlessly you know fit into the up to your neck to two and all that stuff that's incredible and it takes a lot of planning and skill yeah for sure and i a lot of people don't realize too like when you get a blackout, it will age like any other tattoo Mm -hmm. and the black will fade a bit. Um, But when it fades, you there's, there's an opportunity to put black patterns on top of it. Um, So once you have a blackout, like you're not, there's more that you can do in the future. Um, And I love the look of black on black tattoos. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Right. The, the, Tattoo artist who tattoos me, Eddie Rise in Albuquerque, he has really oh. great examples of black on black tattoos. So, oh wow, yeah, no, I've seen some myself, and it's I'm actually quite grateful that you explained how it's done. It should have been logical, honestly, for being such a tattoo note that it's just waiting till it's <laughs> faded and you can tattoo on top of it. But yeah, it looks quite incredible sometimes. It's like those matted patterns you see in in in, in fabrics sometimes, where it's black and black yeah. mixed together in different tones. It's incredible to see. Yeah, it's very beautiful. I'm excited to do black on black at some point. <laughs> but I also just got tattooed, and I uh, yeah, every time neck, I get tattooed, every neck time I want? yes, yes, my neck and my traps, um, mm. and a little bit some like touch ups on uh, like elsewhere on my body. Oh, um, to, some white ink to since so I'm, I have a lot of blastovers. <laughs> but every time I get tattooed, I'm like. I'm like, I can take a break. <laughs> it's so intense <laughs> that I really need a break after each time. <laughs> well, it goes out saying, collectors and the two artists, we are the biggest uh, pussies when it comes to actually taking the break. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, there are some days where I get tattooed and I'm like, I am so, I'm such a beast. I'm like, really, I was like, killed it with that session and then there are some days where i'm like i I did not handle that well (laughs) i always look at newbies and go like you'll be fine you still have adrenaline when you go into this you'll be absolutely that's gonna take all the edge off you'll be you'll sail through this i on the other hand i know fully what to expect there's no adrenaline anymore it's just regular old excitement and it's gonna hurt like a fucker (laughs) yeah it's brutal (laughs) i hear it gets worse when you're older and i'm like i don't know if I don't I mean, know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna reveal when I'm true. older than you are not. When I'm older than you are not, Katie. I shall just continue on assuming that I am. So I'll just say <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, if it if it's if it helps, I do think that the more you get tattooed, the more you learn coping mechanisms. Oh yeah. yeah um, yeah, yeah. and you start I just to know talk like. A lot. Like same reason I do the podcast, nice. I just yeah. talk a lot. <laughs> oh, talking can be a great distraction. Oh, it's so is you still feel the pain, but you manage to just shut down whatever you're getting tattooed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why oh, I Oh, actually that's I a funny story about a black or, blackout tattoo you might enjoy now that we are on the topic yeah. today. Because when I was getting my dragon here done in Glasgow, opposite me, a very famous two artist called Marcus in the same studio was doing a white ink on a blackout to two and it was the first time doing it but that wasn't the problem nice. the problem was how painful it was for this client and he's sitting there yeah. lying with his arm out like this and he's looking up at me just sitting there and it's hurting like a motherfucker my tattoo but he's sitting perfectly still just talking with my tattoo artist and he just looks up at me <laughs> in pain at one point shaking just goes how do you do that and just so out for me to go like do what sit like that and he's like you just sit like <laughs> You're like I signed up for this. I, I, I feel so, I felt so bad for disappointing him like that because he's more to toot than me, and he's asking me for like how I just sit like that. Yeah, I don't know. But he I, was shaking. People, he was like, absolutely, you know, like I, I'm sure you've yeah. experienced it. But he was like shaking oh, and all yeah. that stuff, like really going through it. And it wasn't it wasn't the um, amount of time because they were barely in, like they were barely an hour mm-hmm. in at the time. It was like just the sheer pain of putting that much white in there <laughs> with the needles. Yeah. And all that. Ooh. And white ink hurts. 
it, it does. hurts really I don't know what bad, to put in so... it. I don't know what to put in it. I know it makes no chemical sense for any yeah. chemists out there, but it fucking hurts. <laughs> I've heard, I don't, and I have, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard the pigment in white ink is larger and, um, I mean, and it also, make some the consistency, sense. right? The consistency of the ink is, it's a little bit more, um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a social so you... scientist, so I, I'm as curious <laughs> as you are, but, I, but I'm a bit of a nerd. So I would guess yeah. it at least makes sense with my limited natural science knowledge. It makes sense yeah. that the pig, that the that the viscosity <laughs> or the pigment size would hurt more, maybe. Yeah. Do you mind if we take a break so Kento of can course, dump some of course, that footage course, real course, quick? Course. Oh, yeah, Sweet. Of course, of course, of course. Cool. I'm, oh, this is so it. fun. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. Uh... Right, people. We're right, people. We're back from break. <laughs> we have had uh, Sensei Kento fixing uh, some <laughs> IT stuff in the background. Thank you. But. Um, <clears throat> Without gushing too much about Katie's lovely husband, I'm not interested in stealing him <laughs> anyway, so that would be a <laughs> new point. <laughs> uh, I am, however, nerdy enough that I might just for him being Japanese. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, 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 as we were talking about before, with the white inks and that, and how much it hurts and the pain and how uh, we grow very much well, we don't actually grow into the pain as we get older and get more tattoos. It seems to actually get worse every time. <laughs> but um, I wonder, um, Katie, actually, how is it? Do you prefer clients with more experience or, are you, or, 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 or for your type of tattoos? Because they are, as we've talked about, extensive and take a lot of time. Yeah, I, I mean, usually my clients skew older. Um, mm. I think because... I mean, I'm sure it's a number of factors, but I feel like to get a large tattoo, you have to be very sure of your decision. Um, they're more expensive too, which mm -hmm. I think attracts older clientele. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of people have a tattoo journey of starting off getting small tattoos, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of evolve into imagining bigger pieces. So usually when I've tattooed people um, with my work, they they already have some other small tattoos or they might even have like a large tattoo already. It's very, very rare that I um, do a first tattoo for a client, Oof. but it but does have. happen. Oh, shit. I, yeah, it does happen on occasion where someone's like, this is my first tattoo and I want a full sleeve. I mean, um, I admire that and commitment and especially with the, this kind of style, but I also fear yeah. for the health. <laughs> yeah I'm I'm just like you must like yeah I always like try to like pick their brain a little bit and I'm like what made you decide to like go so big I just imagined you and your very sweet dialect being like are you crazy what why are you here already <laughs> what, what what brought are you, you sure? in here like, <laughs> I always feel that with clients like even right, being as right, heavily tattooed right as I am I'm like are you sure <laughs> right there the reception are you sure like yeah are you sure this, this guy can permanent? do a nice little piece for you first you can come back next month we'll figure <laughs> <laughs> yes and i will say that like for first tattoos it is a pretty rude awakening mm. to get something so heavy like the machines i use are they're hard-hitting machines i tattoo mm. very very fast too oh, right, um, right, right. fast and efficient i should say <laughs> um so <laughs> yeah you are definitely married to a japanese guy <laughs> 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 i don't want fast to sound sloppy the, because the, i am very them, careful them, but... <laughs> them and the germans fast and efficient <laughs> yes fast and efficient and perfect <laughs> precise perfect fast yes. efficient no mistakes no redos no refunds yes <laughs> <laughs> do it well <laughs> that's what a german but... colleague once said to me at least when i worked in ikea he was like we do it well we do it once we do it fast and there's no refunds <laughs> nice <laughs> that sounds very german <laughs> oh he was he was very funny but he was also very german <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but like a lot of those those clients getting their first piece and it being so big um it it is like it is very intense um but everyone everyone gets through it as as intense as a style as like heavy black work is or as large pieces and as scary as it is everyone is everyone does get through it um some people better than others or some people might struggle initially and i like watch them progress and become mm. like 
just com- completely strong transformed individuals at the end. It's like, mm-hmm. it's so inspiring. It's one of my favorite parts about the job is just the way in which people transform and like how much they like grow into themselves um, well, throughout say, the I whole I process. I very much about when I watch your profile and I've looked at it many times. It's one of my favorite things where it pops up sometimes uh, your videos about clients and the projects because you seem very passionate and I think in a very positive way, which I think younger to two artists are doing more and older artists, two artists could learn about sometimes. You seem proud of your clients when they get through it, which I think is really sweet and really awesome because it's a lot. It's oh, a please. lot to sit through that. Like yeah. ignoring all the the money question, all that. It's a lot. You're sitting through an entire sleeve, let alone heavy pieces like you do. Like totally. it's a lot. So I get why yes. you're proud of them. And it's your art and their Very body as well. So. And if they sat well, that's incredible. Yeah. I think like one of the reasons why I wanted to undergo a full body suit was um, like one aesthetic. Two, I wanted to learn how to tattoo. And I think undergoing it is an important part of that. Mm. Um, but I also wanted to know what my clients are experiencing. Um mm. And, and it's helped tremendously. Like if I'm tattooing a certain part of the body, I know what my client is experiencing. Like I have flashbacks to getting those areas tattooed. <laughs> and I think that's PTSD. partly why I'm so proud of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a bit like while I'm working, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> memories. <laughs> but I think that has to do with why I feel so proud of them at the end, because I know mm. firsthand what they've gone through and I know yeah. how hard it is. Like I might, my tattoos might make me look tough or might make me seem tough, but it, it was a struggle. <laughs> I will say, I will say only to the untrained eye. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. I just always love <laughs> letting people into the fact that tattoos don't make you tough. We just look no. at, to the untrained tattoo people. Tattoo people are Because among, among other tattoo people, <laughs> none of us look tough just for having tattoos. It takes something else. But to, yeah. to people outside of the tattoo world, just having some heavy tattoos will sometimes make people think you're tough or you handle pain really well. Like we've all tried being at the doctors needing a shot or a blood test. They're like, oh, you should be able so to true. handle this. I fucking hate that. And I can't look at it. So I true. can sit there and I'll wince a bit at, yeah. the, at the syringe going in, but I'm looking away. I can't look at it. Yeah. I can't look at it either. I'm like, and I'll often even, tell people. Even like, the heavy get... black work does not change this. It's so I awesome can't, I can't do those types of needles. It's just like so deep in your skin and so invasive that like I nowadays I get queasy um, <laughs> and I, I feel so I feel so silly telling like a doctor that I'm like just so you know I like I might pass out I might get close to passing out like contrary to what my tattoos might suggest yeah. I don't do well ignore, with needles. No, <laughs> all of this yeah. and focus here this woman yes. <laughs> will pass out. <laughs> Pretend I have no tattoos. <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm like, a big look at I'm this, a big look at this now with so is a Chanel like face here. <laughs> and ignore the rest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's fun. I, I honestly love walking because I do I guess I I come across pretty girly and I dress girly and I've always mm. loved the contrast of being so I tattooed. It's kinda nice. But yeah, yeah it's I think like it's cool. I don't know. Cause, cause I think, I've never felt uh, that girly inside too. I was always no, no. like there's like a darker side to me or like I want to look unique. I want to look different. I want to look different. I don't want to look like a, mm. I don't want to follow standard uh, forms of beauty. I kind of wanted to like define it for myself. So well, I like I have walking two around. Things I would say, like... <laughs> two things I would say as yeah. a sociologist on that. And of course, biased being, you know, I'm not just some guy that just comes in. This comes from a bit of sociological background as well. First of all, I absolutely get the, the, the desire for many women who get heavily tattooed to claim their mm-hmm. own right to identity and reclaim some identity yeah. lost to yes. pat- 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 to patriarchal beauty standards and that. Yes. Because it's yeah, made more so, fun when so you well feel a, a heightened sense of control. Even I feel like that. I love mm-hmm. the sense of control over my own exterior and self-expression that tattoos afford me. Even some of the totally. ones that don't have deep meaning anything like that. And I think that goes more than doubly so for women who've had a lot of choice and a lot of agency taken away by uh, heightened pressures to fit in in order to be allowed, so to speak, to mm-hmm. participate. So yes, I totally get totally. that. And I think that's why it's awesome when I hear you and I when I heard, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my friend uh, Sia Tattoos talk about it, that you should mm-hmm. see more women that just go for it. If that's how you want to look, fucking go for it. 
And then yeah, find, for sure. And if, it, and if it's because you you fear what a man might say, find a fucking man that likes it. Then we are out there. Exactly. <laughs> I say it's a good like people filter. Like if oh, ever yes. I I meet someone and they're extremely off put mm. from the start, I'm like, well, we probably wouldn't get along. Or especially with like with comments from men because I do get quite a quite a bit quite a few of those I every once in a while where they're like you like they they say they don't like my appearance or they don't find it attractive wow. and I'm like good because you are probably oh, not the kind uh, of I, I, person I, I was trying seen, to attract anyway I uh, bet you've seen this audio go viral on Instagram as well but I love that they took that viral of this uh one of these bro influencers that talked about how women would dyed hair and tattoos they're showing you yes. their poisonous frogs and I'm like i love yes, all these I women that, that, are, that video, are stealing actually. that and then showing off how they've told the to just signal that like yeah we don't want these scumbags i'm like yes yes well done, exactly ladies. thank you i was like those were the types of men who would hit on guy, you back in the day exactly. that, 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 and come on too strongly like or not take no for an and answer so, type yeah. of thing exactly they're so but it's also guy i love when guys like that are put down by women in that way because Mm-hmm. It also allows for a sp- more space for guys like me who are softer, who don't, who barely would totally. dare to talk to a woman, let alone cat call her <laughs> and stuff like totally. that. Totally, and all that shit. And when I, I sometimes do talk to a woman, I always think in my head like, "Am I talking too much? Have I gone too far? Should I not have invited <laughs> her over to get a beer here? Should I not have invited her? Should I just fuck off right now? Have I misread signals to that? I don't know. Of course, I can <laughs> fuck up too. I'm a man. I could of course fuck up too." But it's still nice to know that at least guys like me who think about it mistakes and if they make one fucking apologize, there's more space for us than these assholes out there that are like, oh, tattooed women are just showing you how toxic they are. Fuck off, man. Then leave <laughs> them for the rest of us. All the other women yeah. are into or whoever's into them. Fuck, man. I know. It's like, it's so bizarrely so, so, judgmental. So basically, what me, like... what, me and my dear, what me and my dear associate Katie here are saying to any women watching or listening in here, especially young women, uh, do get the heavy tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> do it. If you want it, <laughs> if you can envision it for yourself, Absolutely. go for it. And it's, it's I always, I often tell people yourself. too, for sure. And I often tell people too, like, if you've never wanted a tattoo and you don't want one, like, you look great without yeah, it. There's exactly. no pressure to, to get we're tattooed We're not either. we're not recruiting members to the club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As I like, to but tell if you want to join, absolutely, we welcome, we're, you. <laughs> we welcome new members, but we're not recruiting. Yeah, <laughs> that's always how I yeah. explain it to people. I welcome anybody that wants to join the tattoo world. We're not recruiting. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. welcome to come and- in, <laughs> but but all these maybes and that, I'm not going to talk you into getting a tattoo. If if, yeah. if it's a maybe for you, you don't want it enough. If, yeah. you, if you want a tattoo, you fucking want a tattoo and you should get the tattoo. Yeah. And book with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. And book with Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the promo material. <laughs> of course. I will say, I, I imagine you have quite a lot of fans by now. But 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 before we get into that, there was one note I had before. The only worry, uh, just to return to something we were talking about before with your clients and newer clients and that, uh, with first timers with a tattoo style like yours, I think on one side, as a, as a sociologist specializing in identity especially, it can be very healthy going a bit bolder and a bit bigger than some people do for the first one. Because you're actually going to mm-hmm. really learn something about yourself. You're actually going to really try what it is to be tattooed more so than a small tattoo will ever teach you. And that can be very healthy. Mm-hmm. But you also need to be doubly sure you want it. Because it's also a lot and you will get a lot of attention. Bigger tattoos get more attention. And trust me, and I bet Katie will back me up on this, even the positive attention you get sometimes will be a lot. Especially if you're not yes. used to it. <laughs> Yes, totally. Not everybody I don't know comes why. up with malice. Not everybody comes up with malice right. and touches you or wants to see it or pulls your shirt up. It can be the absolute, genuine, uh, pure-hearted curiosity. It's still not okay. Mm-hmm. It's still a lot, and you gotta be ready for it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I don't know why I didn't like factor that aspect into the my experience getting tattooed because I'm contrary to how my I think I portray myself on Instagram I'm <laughs> I'm quite shy and um I I'm I am like a pretty private person um mm. and so when I'm when I'm out in public and uh people compliment me or point out my tattoos it is always kind of surprising 
Um, mm. And I do immediately feel shy and somewhat reserved. Um, it's weird. I, I, I tell people I, because I'm, my viewpoint is out this way, I don't really see my tattooed self very much. Um, so I don't think of myself as being heavily tattooed um, really until I see a photograph and then I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I went hard. Like I've got a lot of ink on my skin, <laughs> but otherwise like, I don't, I just like, I don't know. I don't see it very much. <laughs> I, I love that you surprise yourself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, uh, those, those photographs. I'm like, I'm so. That's. So, I really, I really went hard with this. I'm. That is honestly a, a favorite. Lot of ink. <laughs> uh, not to digress, but that's one of my favorite jokes. I sometimes pull out. I, I stole it from my twin brother back in the day, though. Uh, when people go like, "Oh, you're tattooed." If it's like in a bond that, and they act surprised like that, and tell me I'm tattooed, I always go like, "Oh shit." <laughs> yeah how did that get there <laughs> i came i swear these were not there when i came in <laughs> oh man i'm gonna use that that's hilarious it yeah, kind of reminds me of like my brother has a lot of tattoos and sometimes people would be like do you they'd be like do you regret any of them and he'd be like oh yeah all of them <laughs> just to like throw people off he's like yeah I regret uh, every single that, one. <laughs> that actually that actually brings me nicely to another point I think people misunderstand about heavy black work or ornamental tattoos like you do. Because I think a lot of people think when you cover up other tattoos, it's because you regret them. And it's not always mm. the case. You just might like That's the new true. tattoo better. Like I've met so many totally. people that cover up a tattoo without ever regretting the old one. But we only have one fucking mm -hmm. flesh unit here. And only totally. one skin. So yeah, sometimes yeah. you need to, something old needs to go for something new to be even cooler. It's not a regret. <laughs> for sure. I even like, I had a lot of tattoos on my arms before I had my arm blackouts done. And like some of them, I was quite sad to see go because they were like really beautiful and really cool. But I knew that like for my overall aesthetic, um, mm. they had to be covered because, yeah. oh, and this is a, this is a difficult thing with, with large tattoos um, it can be quite difficult to work around other small oh, yeah, tattoos yeah, yes, absolutely. because it can disrupt the the entire flow. So sometimes yeah, and, it is and better sometimes to ruin the cover design. up or blast like, over. Yeah, like, totally. Absolutely, the best piece of advice, totally. and I, I'm only saying this from a collector. Katie can correct me if she wants, uh, of course. But uh, I'd say best always be honest if you have other tattoos in the area you want to get tattooed, especially if you want to get a big design, because the sooner someone like Katie can know if they need to work around mm -hmm. a tattoo, the more successful that workaround may be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, as much as possible, I I try to work around uh, mm. tattoos if someone wants to keep them. But it's difficult. But people have it's, a surprise it's very when they hard. come in, though. Like, like, because oh, I imagine yeah, that would that happen is... sometimes. You cannot tell me that it never happened <laughs> that somebody came in and forgot to tell you, oh, yeah, by the way, the arm we're doing a sleeve on. I have yes. this tattoo. Is it okay if we can keep that? And it's like, okay, yes. you didn't That's, you didn't that's show one me of this. the reasons. That's one of the reasons, actually, because I have been surprised in the past. And that is one of yeah. the reasons why I have to have photographs of the, yeah. the tattoo location. Yeah. Um, because, you can't exactly yeah, move can be... your design up and down the arm. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And it can it can definitely throw off a piece. I, I kind of feel lucky with my style that like there are yeah. certain ways to have it flow around other tattoos. Mm -hmm. Um, cause you know, if someone wants to keep one of their smaller tattoos, I want to honor that as much as possible. And, and speaking of that, I, I, one thing I admired about your style, and we talked about it a bit in the emails before we set this up, I love how you really try to reinvent this a bit also, because I really, for example, we talked about the collaborative pieces you've done with a couple of artists where you add these colors into it and all that as well. And it makes a whole yeah. new unique sort of tattoo style almost. In this collab in, yeah. in these collaborations. It's really cool. Oh man, it is so fun. Collaborating is is like it's really fun. It can be quite difficult. And you always come out of it learning so much from mm. from the artists that you work with. Um I I hope to do more of them in the future. I would um, I would I hope actually, so too, but, but I think but that's the yeah. thing. My point I wanted to get to was I think that some people think it's more difficult to collaborate with ornamental style tattoos. Mm. at times I but wonder I think that's a shame because I think innovation yeah. sometimes springs from these challenges yeah and you so rarely yeah, see sure. people uh you can't see it but it's more often with more like traditionally uh tribal 
like tattoos where they collaborated in with something you don't often see with your type of of, of ornamental style but i think that's the exciting mm -hmm. part at least looking from the outside in when for example i never saw anybody mixing in color like that with ornamental tattoos before and it looks amazing that that wouldn't yeah. happen unless you guys took that chance and thought hey let's try and see if we totally. can make something awesome here you know totally especially you're i think you're for anyone who wants to like see on my page you're referring to patrick cat um who yeah. tattoos in utah and he does like amazing color work um and he actually reached out to me to do a collab um and i was just like i was like it was an easy yes because i don't tattoo <laughs> with color inks I, i never really did art in color anyway so um, i mean at least I you're advertising I'll... the right way for, for only using black ink <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm like, trust me, I never drew on paper with color even. So we're definitely not doing it on your skin. Um, <laughs> but so with his work, I was like, like, fuck, yeah, to put color yeah. in some of the pieces that I do. I was like, I was very sold. So I, I, can imagine. I hope to I work with him in, in the future. Thank you. I, I, Thank I, you. On that note, actually, and to sort of round, round us out uh, off on a, or, uh, it's actually been quite lighthearted today. Normally, I would say a light on note because we've, we might have been <laughs> talking about something really heavy in, in an episode. But on a more goofy note or silly note, perhaps, I'm wondering, is there a style out there you imagine would be interesting to see combined with yours, like a certain style of tattooing? Oh, and I'll man. be happy to pick one myself as well. I, I would like as a challenge to see you do. But I want you to pick one first. Let's see. A style out there. I mean, I've never, I've never collaborated with anyone who does realism, and so just mm. for like the challenge and for doing something different, that would be really cool and a ton of fun. I like, I have, I a lot of the tattoo artists at the shop um, I own and run are fine line artists, oh, and right. it is, it is very difficult to combine heavy black work <laughs> with fine line. That would, and that so, is gonna erase a fine line tattoo. <laughs> Yeah, like you, you have to be at, very you careful. Don't go over it. You, you, you're absolutely totally. going to steal the show, so to speak. Like, there's going to be nothing totally. else people notice. Like, yes. I, I'm not going <laughs> to bash fine line work. When it's done well, it's done well, like any Auditor 2 style. Yeah. But it is absolutely going to be overshadowed by a style like yours. For sure. And like, <laughs> like I, I kind of like the realism. challenge of trying. <laughs> no, there, yeah, are ways to, there are ways that they can complement each other, but and I want to do more collaboration with my coworkers. So I my mind that, is thinking yeah. like, how could I, how could we make something cool? Like what could we implement with their styles? <laughs> um, I, so I feel like just off the top of my head, like the, the challenge of fine line and because I haven't ever done it before and I don't know, I'm not, I don't work with many artists who do realism. I'd love to do a collaboration with someone who does I like black really, and gay, gray realism. I could really see a black and gray realism tattoo work like your sort of tattoo yeah. style in the background because it might actually accentuate the other, the, the, the black and gray bit as well in a really cool way. Yeah, I think so. I would personally, and this might be a weird pick, but it's also because of my nerdy background, I think. I would love to see someone like you work with somebody like Lunacy Tattoos from, from Dublin Island and her like Ooh. black and gray new traditional style that's very like gothic and castlevania like in that because i think something that would about be cool. something about your specific style in, in ornamental tattoos would yeah. complement that sort of dark aesthetic really cool as well yeah i would love that that's what oh, I, I mean that would be my pick i would say that, that that would honestly be my pick yeah i think that would be i could visualize that like way better Maybe I'll have to go to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I? What am I doing to you now? And I'm giving you travel plans as well. <laughs> you're no, you're I, I, connecting I, I, people I all over impulse. the world. <laughs> I mean, I love doing that. I I, I, I don't know Lu, Lu, Lucy as she's named very well, but I have met her in person at Brighton, and and I she's a very nice person when I met her. And I've spoken very briefly to her on Instagram as well afterwards, uh, mainly. Uh, fanboying over her to two styles sometimes because it's fun to recognize references from different video games or uh, other nerdy media i consume <laughs> and so oh her, that's awesome of her to two work and i if, if i could and had the money for it she would it would either be her or my friend sia where i would get them to do a dune tattoo on my five <gasps> that would be super cool i love dune and i want it based on the books and it's Same. and if, if i got 
see it to do it, it would be completely freehand to her design, just a massive five piece. If I ever got it done yeah. by someone like Lucy, I would want a, a my idea would be a diamond shape with four characters from each house in it. Nice. And a dash of color behind it in her awesome new traditional black Ooh, and gray that style. That would be so cool. I think so, because it will accentuate these colors of, in that. Yeah. And speaking of Dune, um, if anyone is getting tattooed and wants a good pain distraction, I read the first book um, oh, mm. when I when I was getting tattooed over three days um, at Eddie's shop in oh. Albuquerque. Um, and I sat so well for those three days and I just powered through the first book. So what? It's an, that book is an pages? excellent pain distraction. Yeah, I mean, three days of tattooing. I, I mean, think yeah, I like, sure. read Actually, at least yeah. most of it. <laughs> I mean, I love that. It was it's, awesome. It's I was just like, ah, fear book. is the mind killer. <laughs> Oh, Such wait till book. you get to. The, I, I don't. I don't like how the third book gets a lot of bad rep because the ending is mm. nuts, and I fucking love how nuts <gasps> the ending is. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Uh, uh, I still I, gotta. Next I time I get tattooed, say, I'll probably bring book two. Okay, Katie, I'll, I'll only on say this third. about book three, and it won't be a spoiler, but it'll be something that'll get you excited about it. It makes the ending of book three makes it so apparent why book four is named God Emperor Dune. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Sweet. That, that, until I read book three, I was like, why is it called God Emperor Dune? It's fucking weird. <laughs> then I read book three and I'm like, yeah, it can't be called anything else with how this ends. Oh my God. Sick. That sounds so metal. Yeah, that's actually, oh, good. Oh, I'm, I'm a, looking forward to reading. That's some really <laughs> crazy stuff that like it goes heavier and heavier sci-fi throughout the second and third book. Oh, sweet. I love I sci-fi like. so I personally much. like that. I personally like that. Like more alien species, not oh, like it's never going to Star Wars level and stuff like that. But it's a bit more alien species. It's a bit more mystery and a bit more uh, uh, supernatural powers and stuff like that in the second and third book. Oh, cool! I'm so excited. But now, but now we're digressing a lot, actually. So to bring us a bit <laughs> back on topic, I can actually really see your style of your Dune tattoo without it ever being actual imagery in that way. Yeah, but there's yeah, something about I your actually... style. That sort of lends it to sort of an Arrakis feel. If you like, I can almost imagine if you did certain of your tattoo designs, especially with the gradiating, uh, wit shading, stuff like that, it would sort of get an Arrakis sort of sand like feel to it. Yeah, I actually Which, have a project. Um, I think it's coming up. It might be in a few months. Um, that's sort of like sand dune inspired. I look forward um, to seeing that. Yeah, it'll be it'll be cool. Um, else you grab the first realism artist you can find and make them put in a black and gray version of Arrakis. <laughs> just Paul's a portrait of oh, Paul. No, 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 no. I meant the planet. Not, no, I mean, Jesus Christ, could you imagine? I mean, you just can't like give wavy that... sandworms. You, you can't give that tattoo to any young woman, at least as far as I know, because they'll never look away from their arm again with how they're fawning over to the Chalamet. <laughs> It's probably true. <laughs> they, they're going to be driving that car through LA and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> he's so dreamy. My, uh, I think it was John Oliver that, des that described him as Sandy Boy Space Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Which honestly, that fits very well. I, I love Dune, but that fits. It's about as it fits as well as how some people have described Star Wars as movies about space wizards. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I love John Oliver. He's so funny. <laughs> oh, absolutely, same here. I would love for him actually to get do a do a, a segment on tattoo someday. Ah, uh, I know. Like they're, I would, honestly, I, there, I, I there was are thinking so many... when I saw when I saw with aggressive, but we'll round off in a bit. But actually, yeah. I was thinking about when I saw that they're gonna do the same thing they did in Europe in the states now. I was thinking, like, hmm. if only John Oliver would do a piece in this, because I bet he would be on the side of the artist, because the scientists are on the side of the two artists. Because hmm. they, they've all uh, disproven the regards... Swedish study already. Like, what is this study? It's be, it, I'm I've read it. I've read it. I had my mate who's a sociologist as well read it, and it's a STEM study, yes. But the methodology within it is so piss poor, you can't prove anything and the other thing is right-wing media mm. has just run away with this because they never say they proved anything they say they right. developed a suspicion of a chat yeah. of a 25 percent chance of lymphomatic cancer that means that there mm. might be or there might not at all be a 
that chance of lymph, lymph, lymphatic cancer. And the thing is, it's been disproven yeah. before. There's yet to be any definitive proof of cancer risk in any tattoos ever. Right. I get asked that question a lot. And I always say, with medical questions, I'm like, you should ask a doctor. Yeah. I was not trained in medicine. I do uh, art. Preferably but, but even never still, a private think... doctor because they might be biased yeah. to any paying interests. If you can, yeah. ask a medical scientist. That's the best way to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right to... And it, it, it like, yeah. I mean, tattoos are so... There's so much stigma still. Yeah. And like I said earlier, I think people, like, fear or hate what they don't understand. Mm. And so sometimes I I notice that happening, like, yeah. like with with tattoo culture today, just yeah. in general, like, health concerns or, mm. like, suspicions about tattoo inks. I think it's a lot of it, I think, has... Comes even from, sheer, like, even underlying stigma. Even just ignorant mm -hmm. misunderstandings. Like, you must have gotten this because of your blackout tattoos, which I bet a lot of people with blackouts get. Even people with heavy resumes sometimes get this. It's like, do, can you still sweat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And like, I do a like, lot. <laughs> if, you haven't, if you haven't been asked it yet, I've at least met other people with blackout sleeves and heavy sleeves that are like, can you still sweat when you have all that ink in your skin? And it's like, Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, I just sweat ink. Because <laughs> there was once this myth that happened, that came out. I can't remember where it originated, actually. Matt Lada might know. I don't know if he actually would. But there was once a myth that originated somewhere about how, oh, this guy died of overheating because he was tattooed all over his body and couldn't sweat anymore. It's not true at all. Oh, my but, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy. What a myth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What a way to go as well if that's if that was yeah, seriously seriously <laughs> overheating yeah, I... awesome <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what it was <laughs> but uh, oh, katie I've, I've kept you for a long time now uh, uh first of all i want to say thank you so much for being on the podcast oh thank you it I've didn't really feel that long at all <laughs> no i know i know oh isn't that I always the thing? I can nerd out about tattoo topics for like hours and hours and hours, believe well, me. You are always welcome to message me whenever you need a body to nerd out. <laughs> yes, thank you. I, I will, I'm sure. But we have a lot of like resources to, <laughs> to exchange <laughs> tattoo but Katie, nerd knowledge. Uh, <laughs> but, but Katie, thank you for being on, first of all. I can't thank you enough thank for that. Thank you. And the other thing is, My pleasure. Uh, please as I know you've always been eager to do earlier, uh, please plug your studio and other projects you have going on. Let people know where they yes. can find you. Sure. Well, you can find me first on Instagram. My handle is Katie Mizuno. Um, and also look up Darkwater. On Instagram, it's darkwater.ink, I-N-K. Um, and please check out the other artists who work here. They're mm. extremely talented um, and they they deserve a spotlight. So. Oh, absolutely. And, and as you said, it's you and Kento that own Darkwater and run it, right? Yes. Yep. Oh, it's me and my husband, Kento, who are running it. I, and if, and if anyone's ask. ever in the area, please like stop by and you can check out our space. Even I mean, if it's not I for a tattoo, we have an open door. So. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I know I will if I'm ever in Berkeley. I mean, I will be yeah, wearing copious do. amounts of sunscreen, so I will look very pale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you and sort of California both, sun. <laughs> drenched in sunscreen always. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Fuck me, man. But I have one more question before we end it because I just re yeah. realized by hearing it's two studio name again. Is that named after the Legends of Dark of the Dark Water, the pirate no. cartoon from the from the early nineties, late eighties? It's not, but I'm I'm gonna look that up. I can't remember if that's what it was <laughs> called. Really it was a really curious. cool cartoon that really got cancelled, but everybody loved it. And it was a pirate oh, fantasy cool. cartoon. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! But, I don't but, know, but I'll look it up. Especially, but we'll talk about relations. we'll talk about that after we end the episode. <laughs> yeah, right. I know we can to, go. We, the, to... the podcast will be way too long if we. Can. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> Nobody's gonna listen, Katie, because they're gonna see five hour mark at the bottom. <laughs> but, but yeah, all right. <laughs> to, to anyone Sorry, watching everybody. or listening in, uh, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Hello everybody, I hope you enjoyed this awesome episode with Katie Misuno and with some guest appearances from her lovely husband Kento as well, if you notice the mirror in the background of her camera. Uh, 
I have been looking forward to doing this episode with Katie for so long. Uh, I really wanted to do an episode that sort of uh, took some of the a critical look at some of the myths and misunderstandings I thought were popping up regarding black work, blackout tattoos, and ornamental style tattoos, which often get a bad rap for being very simple or requiring low commitment or being an easy fix to covering up old tattoos or tattoos you regret or anything like that. But as you might have seen from the episode and learned from this episode, hopefully, there's a lot more to it than that, and there's a lot more potential within the style and a lot more you can do if you have the right artist to make some incredible tattoos within black work blackout and ornamental style tattooing so hopefully you take that away from this next time we're going to be diving into something quite a bit different to we're going to be looking at medical tattooing uh, not uh, for example some of you might know it from a uh, nibble tattooing on uh, mastectomy uh, patients uh, post mastectomy op- op- operations possibly also uh, later uh, breast augmentations where they get nibble uh, reconstructive tattooing done uh, and other types of medical tattooing as well we might we we'll, we'll, we will also be talking about together with the awesome Tanya Buxton who is the first tattoo artist hired by the NHS the National Health Service in the UK so there's more than a little credibility behind what she has to say and I'm very excited for you guys to enjoy the episode in a couple of weeks time 